Hello, this is Judy. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm working on the 13th prompt for September 2022, and it is stars. So this is going to be a good one. I'm going to do a two-page layout, and I'm going to use this card design. I love having the column of different colored stars going down. I might even attempt to shake her. You never know. But I have photos of my granddaughter in her soccer games and in her basketball game. She's quite the little athlete, not a superstar, although I think she is, but she is very talented. So I'm going to use this layout and do some multicolored stars on a white background with maybe some splattering and get all these on one two-page layout. Okay, I went through a bunch of my stuff. I tried to pull out some papers that would go with these photos. And there aren't any specific colors. Their uniforms are all orange and black in basketball and in the soccer. And there's some green from the grass. There's this really dull wood green from the basketball court. And then there's this mauve for the track. And there's some gray for the bleachers. But uh, not a lot of color, bright color, besides the orange. So in order to pull in some pops of color with the stars, and I pulled out these thin cuts. This is one from our shakers that is no longer available. I'll check on that. It might still be online. You might still be able to get it. This is our new one. And then there is a smaller one that does star cutouts as well. This is to make shaker elements for the large star. So I pulled those out to make my stars, and then I pulled out this stamp set that was used for the catalog card that was made, and I like using some of these elements to stamp the background because it's going to be made mostly white. I'll probably do some splatters and things like that, but these pops of colors, this is like a sample page I made with some inks, and this one was made with liquid pearls I showed in an earlier video. And, oh, there's the little star one. I thought I had pulled it out. And I thought, you know, the gray, then the black. And this has words of encouragement. This is from a mix-in paper. And then this is a mix-in paper, but it has that color from the, the basketball court. And then this orange, which isn't too bright. And then there's the orange check on the back. Black hearts. And I could use the white, but white on white, then I'd have to ink the edges or use something to um, make it stand out from the white background. This gray, again, with the white on white. I really like this arrow with the hearts. It's a directional thing, and it was on the back with some flowers. So I really like that one. And then this wood grain with the hearts. And this has a dot there, so this would be white on white. So most likely I would use this because it does have just a little bit of a brownish tone. And then I found this mix-in. It has really nice green tones to mix with the grass. And then this for the hound's tooth as well. And there's my white daisy for the bases and then cardstock. And I also brought out this one, this paprika mix-in paper because this goes well with the orange for their uniforms and this is just a brushed look and on the back is this orange check type design so I might use this one for the borders for the page borders and instead of cutting out or getting two of these and layering the white on top I'm just going to cut strips and go around the top of the white daisy to save on paper so I can use it in other places as well. So I'll just put borders around here, in other words. All right, I cut my photos down to four inch. Well, when they're matted, they'll be four inch square. And these, this one I couldn't cut down because it has a whole team. So that's gonna be a six by four. And then I have all of my stars cut out. You can see the color variation in them. And I have the blues, one, two, three, the black, there's one, two, there's one here and one over here. I don't know if I'm going to keep them both in there. It's okay to have more. <laughs> and there's uh, some of this gold color that's going in a straight line. So it's, I think it's really balanced. I'm not going to have the stars 
like this. You know, I have them laid out so I have them here. And I do like having this border that's just strips of that paper, this paper here. And the this paper here is, I think, what I'm going to cut my title out of. And then I will back the title either with black or the paprika color. Because the paprika really picks up with this and with the orange that's on these uniforms. So I'm just thinking how I'm going to do the title. I think I'm going to stamp it and cut it out on my brother's skin and cut. Then um, I'll get everything adhered down. I still want to do a little bit of stamping in the background with the stamp set. And that will be in probably black. Black is a good neutral, uh, maybe even a dark gray. I'm not sure. All right, off screen, I went ahead and mounted my photos onto the mats, and I also did my title. I stamped it and then cut it out on my brother's skin and cut with a little bit of a shadow. And I also went through my sports drawer of uh, goodies, <laughs> and I found the sticker sheet with these letters that were the perfect color. So I pulled those out to do part of my title, and the other one will be the other part. And I also pulled out some ephemera that I can use for embellishing. Like these are some handmade ones I made from a recent swap. This is the paper I didn't use. Well, I may have cut some out, but, but like this, the strips from um, some of the papers, like basketball, you can cut that out for a title. So don't throw those away. And then I have a sticker sheet here. I might be able to pull something out. I'm thinking I'm going to put some of these label type words along with the star borders. I also had this and it's got a bunch of neat stickers. I think it's a planner sticker thing, but I got it on sale somewhere. Then this is from Authentique Collection. And what was it that I liked? Oh, again, the words. And this one, because my granddaughter always says, I'm just not tall enough. I'm just not tall enough. So, you know, I'd like to include that if I can. And then this one, I love these Picture My Life cards to use as embellishing items. And so I might use something off of that. I don't know. And I love this quote. I always tell her, if you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, you'll never make a basket if you don't try. I also have some soccer ones. And these are None of these are close to my heart. They're, but, you know, use your stash. It doesn't always have to be close to my heart. Even though I'm a maker, I, I do enjoy other things. And again, these are words. I think this was like something I got in the mail, but a lot of these words are nice. This was from a swap, so I really like that. I can use that as an embellishment. And again, the words on this one. I don't know because they're green. It's a different kind of green. It actually might, yeah, I think it actually looks good. So we'll see. And then some of these stickers. So what's done on the layout? I took away the blue embellishment stars. I they I just couldn't keep them on there. They were too distracting. They didn't. I made a couple more of these stars. I decided I might layer up some of the small stars on the medium sized stars here. I think this is going to be a shaker, and then I can have another shaker down here. This I found was in my stash of embellishments, so I'm not, I don't know, it's a heart, so it's kind of like wrong shape, all right? It's round, even though some of the letters have some roundness to them. I've left it here so I could just look at it and think, and I'm thinking I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and start getting these items put together. The title is not down. I have it on my T-square so that I can move it around and figure out where I want to have it. And these are just on this piece of paper loose so that I had it to look at. I think I like the layout the way it is now. I put three stars here just for extra emphasis. The one thing I am going to do is go around the stars and give it a little shadowing with this paprika ink. It'll help to make them all look cohesive, like they all go together. They have uh, that color that brings them all together. Okay, I brought out some of the shaker window foam and acetate from Close to My Heart. And this is still available until it's sold out. It's not in the main catalog anymore. But if you pick up the star thin cuts, which are also still available, I checked in the meantime in between the last segment and this one, then, you know, you definitely want to pick up these 
foam and acetate packages, it just makes it so much easier. You can make it without it, but then you have to cut the acetate and you have to cut the foam and it just makes it so easy. <laughs> so on the acetate, there is a side that has a film on it and you can see there where I just peeled that off a little bit. And that's the side that I want up. Okay, so I'll peel it off after I put it onto my shaker and I always get it started first. That way I know which side I need to put up and I can take it off. And actually this side I can clean with a little bit of rubbing alcohol just to make sure any of my fingerprints didn't get caught on it. And this is what I use. And I got it online during COVID when alcohol was a very popular item. And it'll probably last me for a long time. <laughs> it's a big bottle. Okay, so this is ready to go. Now also the star cutouts have a right side to go with the star. Like if I went this way, it might not match up perfectly and I'd have to adjust it. So I always try to figure out ahead of time which one is correct orientation. And I know this one is has that little red mark at the top. That's the correct sizing for this bottom piece. And you also get the foam. So I go through and just go around the edge to make sure it is loosened up. So when I put it down, it doesn't stick too much to anything else and it'll come off cleanly and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. But these little foam pieces, it just makes it so convenient to have it all cut out for you. And then the inner part here you can use for anything, just you know to pop anything up. So now I will take this off and I'm guessing that this is going to be the top here because that's the way the squares are laid out. We'll see. We'll hope. Once it's down, you can't really adjust it. <laughs> it's very, very sticky. All right, so now that is down. And now we'll see if we can pull this off and the inner pieces will come up with that release paper. very cleanly and it's perfect shape. If I tried to peel this off of here and then put it on here, it'd be sticking to my fingers and it'd be all disquabulated. Is that a word? I don't know, but yeah, it would be all wonky. So that is the way that I find works the best for me. And now I'm going to find all the little pieces that I made. And these are all the little innards from the cutouts that were on there. And you don't want to have the ones that, who oh, do you want to say, are the wrong color, first of all. So these blue and green ones I definitely don't want because I'm not going to have that color in the layout. Now that orange one would be good. And I don't need a lot of these because I'm going to put sequins and some beads in as well. But I just want a few representation of the stars of the correct colors. And you want to be careful because... You don't want them to get stuck to the adhesive part of the foam that's already exposed. And I will hold my finger in the middle to hold it down so that it doesn't pop up. And you can see some of these have little star outlines. They're just so cute. get some of my sequins and beads to fit in there. I found some of these. These are sequin mixes that I get from Cartwrights. It's an online place where you get sequins and all kinds of stuff. Beads. And I just want a few of these colors. And there's the green. And I got this really cool, it's just called orange. This is called Sedona Sunrise. And then I found these beads. They're like a brown, black, and gold. And that'll give it the sound of 
the shaker, right? Cover this back up before I have beads everywhere. And I'm just going to carefully spread these around so that they don't get humped on top of each other. So now the other side is going to go down and the sequins are very staticky so they will jump up onto this acetate as I'm laying it down. There's just, that's the nature of the beast. So you just have to be really careful because once this is down, it is down. And they didn't jump up. Maybe it's because I used the rubbing alcohol. I don't know. All right. Now I got it over here and here. I'm going to have to trim it down. And that's okay. It's easy to trim that little bit. So now because I had it started, I can peel that off. I'm going to trim it first because then uh, I, I can touch it and I won't have to clean it. And you can just use any scissors to trim this acetate down. It's, it's good acetate, but it's not so thick that you can't cut it. So now we'll peel it off. Oh, look at that. So now I need to put glue on the paper piece that's going to cover it. And it was this one. And I remember the red tip is supposed to go up. And I'm going to put glue on here rather than on the piece I'm going to lift up to attach. And then I'll put this under something to hold it down to keep it until it dries. Okay, inked all the edges, and this one turned out really good. Inked along the edges to cover up any of that white that was showing pretty well. It's not perfect, but it's it's okay for the layout. Hopefully people will see it and see the things that are shaking around in it, and they won't worry about any little imperfections, right? So I brought up the stamp set because now that I have it laid out, basically I can stamp where I want to put my images. I'm going to maybe do one up here like this. And you put it on the smallest block they can get it on. I'll still be able to get this little tail there. And I think I'm going to do this one like that. But I've got this little tiny itty bitty one that I love these like burst stars. So I'm going to start with the paprika. And I'm going to test this on a piece of scrap paper because these have never been used. So let's put some on this other side. stamps I could probably do after I lay everything else down. In case I need to move the stars, I'm going to use this Tombow and it, I'll be able to wiggle them around and lift them up if I need to adjust them. And then after I have them all arranged in the order that I want, I can add glue to make them permanent.
Okay, you saw me work through that title, and I've seen other people use their rulers or similar objects to put their letters down and have them line up, and they flip it up, and uh, the letters come off, and everything looks so nice. <laughs> Didn't work so well for me. First of all, probably because I have the T-square on it, and uh, this is, these letters are quite sticky. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw a light pencil line to be able to line these letters up. Oh, sometimes we're just so, want to be so precise and it really doesn't have to be like that, right? Okay, now I'm just going to do a little bit of stamping and I'm going to use our honey butter for this largest star stamp. And I'm going to use paprika for the next stamp and this is an outline. I'm going to do the, it's more of a bold pattern for this little star. So let's use the shortbread. sunburst. I think I'll go back to the honey butter. And for the smallest one, let's do paprika. And looking at this, I really like how it turned out. I don't want to add anything else to it because it's already really busy around here, which are centering the photos. And I still have my journaling to add, which I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put it. I know I can put a line here. I might be able to add a little strip right here to cover up that dead portion of the photo, and that'll be fine. So I can talk about the basketball here and the soccer here. But I think adding anything else is going to detract instead of enhance. So I just want to show you that shaker real quick. You can see it. And all those stars really came out nice. I am so glad that I took away that blue and that other green. Um, because I think they were very distracting and drawing your eye away from the photos. And that girl is also subtle, but a nice little enhancement to add a little interest. And the outline uh, border of this page really um, brings it together. So I hope you enjoyed this. It was a little longer video than I thought, as they seem to always be. But I got more photos on the layout, and I am pleased with it. Please check out the video description for the playlist so you can see all the other people that are joining along with these prompts for scrap timber 2022 and well i thought i was done but as i was going through the videos i realized i didn't go through my ephemera packs and pull out those words that i wanted to use so i did that quickly and i just wanted to show you the words i use dribble score go hard or go home and i really like how those draw your eye there and i also wanted to mention see how it has just very light sprinkling of words in the middle of this heart and i just put heart there heart of gold and you kind of can you know leave it to your interpretation what that would say and the same with over here never stop so you know encouraging words is in other words so on here i did block kick and then ball i didn't have soccer for a word and i'm going to put a date here those little stickers from the sticker book that i had so i really like it it added a lot but not a not too much to deter your view from the layout so I <laughs> now i think i'm done okay have a great day